let's get right into the haul. So let's, uh, before I show any comic books, I'm going to show you this regular book. It's called The Comic Book Makers. So this is a, this is like a cool, like, uh, I guess, coffee table slash comic book history, you know, Jack Kirby, Joe Simon uh, stuff. So I picked this up from Jesse uh, Simon at his booth. Uh, when I went over to Artist Alley to say hello to him. Um, but, uh, you know, so he, he signed it for me. He said to my good friend Kavi and Jesse Simon, as you can see, his signature is very similar to his grandfather's, um, Joe Simon. But uh, pretty cool, like, you know, comic book history uh, type uh, book, you know, good for the coffee table, good for the shelf, good to flip through. Uh, so, you know, picked that up from him, wanted to support him. Uh, I went to go check out his panel and everything, and that was really cool as well. So glad to have something uh, that I could take take away with me uh, from his booth. Um, but uh, let's get into some comics uh, that I did pick up at the show. So uh, I, I feel like I have like seven copies of this, but this was a free book that some, I forget which dealer threw in with, you know, because I picked up one or two other books, so he just threw this in. I, I think I have, like, I think every time I go to a show, uh, somebody gives me a free copy of this, probably because they're just, you know, lying around in bulk or whatever, but this is that Year of the Villain, whatever, one-shot thing, I guess, yeah. But, you know, that was just a freebie. I don't really consider that part of the haul, but I wanted to get it out of the way. Um, so the, the next couple books are uh, pretty sweet Adam Hughes covers that I picked up. I'm not a huge Vampirella collector, but I think Unruly Simeon would be proud of these next few books. Um, I, I might have like 10 Vampirella books total, uh, you know, to my name, but I was able to add three more at the, um, at the, uh, at the show. Um, this one's Vampirella number one, Adam Hughes. So just, you know, this little set of Adam Hughes Vampirella covers are just really, really nice. Um, and uh, I found these in a bin for pretty, you know, relatively cheap, relatively affordable, all in the same box. So starting with uh, Vampirella number one right there, Adam Hughes. Uh, what's up, Unca Uncanny Kyle Waka is in the house. Um, Good to see you. Uh, but yeah, there it is. Vampirella number one, Adam Hughes. And then we have the number two that I picked up at the same time. Adam Hughes cover right there. Uh, he has quite the talent for drawing this character, I would say. Uh, and then, of course, this is the one that uh, I believe uh, helped Unruly Simeon win the indie version of Comic Glories uh, a couple weeks ago, and that is the Vampirella number three Adam Hughes cover. Yeah, that is a fantastic cover. So I was at the show with Tony, and I was, and we had like split up to cover different booths at one point, and I was like, and he's the Vampirella guy. So I was like, you'll never guess what I just found in a bin and picked up. And, uh, and I'm, I'm, he has the books already, so I, I'm pretty sure. So, uh, so he, it wasn't like he was mad that I picked up Vampirella when he's the Vampirella guy. But yeah, these are, these are some, some awesome uh, uh, Adam Hughes uh, vampies. Next, we have a couple Batman uh, modern sort of related pickups. This is, this is just a really cool uh, Joker Harley cover from the original Sean Murphy Batman White Knight series. So this was... Uh, this was uh, issue number eight and I didn't have this actual like I have all the trades and stuff like that for for this stuff uh, and hardcover uh, uh, But I uh, didn't have the single issue cover so I picked that up uh, I don't know if you can see that and you can kind of see it. Uh, so that was in there uh, I picked up this uh, Batman uh, so this was the movie special I guess the 1989 Batman uh, adaptation. And this is a, I found this for really cheap in a bin and it couldn't believe how nice condition it was. It's almost, I would say almost nine, eight condition. I mean, maybe nine, six condition, but it was a very nice copy of the uh, Batman, uh, 1989 Batman movie uh, adaptation special comic. Uh, with uh, Denny O'Neill writing that one. So 
uh, picked that up as well, added that to the collection. So this was cool. I found this for, uh, I think, four bucks um, in a bin. Uh, and what was cool was it was signed by the writer and it came with the COA as well. Uh, and not, you know, it's, it's not, it's not like, it's not a, it's not a near mint copy or anything like that, but it is a signed comic and it is a Catwoman, uh, key, Catwoman number one. So Catwoman number one, and it's signed by the writer Joe Duffy right there. So found that, had to, had to grab that. Uh, I like, you know, if I can stumble upon signed books for pretty cheap, I tend to pick them up if it fits something that I'm collecting, uh, especially. So there it is, Catwoman number one, signed by Joe Duffy with a COA. So I did add that, grab that. Uh, this one's pretty cool. So this is uh, Batman, uh, well, let me just show it first because when you first see it, you think you know what it is. It's Batman 608, the beginning of the hush run uh, for you know Jim Lee, Jeff Loeb. But uh, it's actually not numbered because this was like a special edition giveaway version of the book for the New York Post. So you see that New York Post exclusive down there and then up there it says special edition. So I'd actually, I don't think I'd ever actually bumped into this promotional version or this, this specific copy in the wild until this show. So I saw this uh and uh you know another pretty cheap pickup but a pretty cool batman book um i had never i honestly had never seen this new york post giveaway version or exclusive version uh before um yeah right it's it's a pretty cool pickup i mean I, you know i already have the original 608 it's not that's not a hard book to find but this is a you know this this one i'd never actually come across honestly so um so happy to have found that and added that uh so one of the things i've been kind of experimenting with a little bit um is uh foreign editions uh on on comics like i'm not going like mental like into foreign editions or anything like that and like trying to get as many as i can or whatever but if there's a foreign edition of a comic that I'm already, you know, collecting, uh, i.e. like for a key issue or for a cover I like or whatever, uh, if there is a foreign edition, I, you know, I might, I might dabble in that because uh, I have, a, I have a few. Um, but uh, this one was pretty cool. This is the Mexican version of Tech 880. So it's Detective Comics uh, 880, and like the it's a very glossy like it's not it's not um, it's not like a chrome cover or anything, but it's a very glossy cover. Um, and uh, this is like a 98 all day uh, Tech 880 jock cover, uh, of course. Uh, but as you can see right here, you can see that the price is in pesos, uh, and I did open it up, and the whole the whole comic is in Spanish. Uh, so the whole thing was adapted for the Mexican slash Spanish speaking audience right here with this international copy. Um, I do have the regular, you know, Tech 880 uh, first print or whatever with uh, in a 98 because uh, I just am a big fan of the jock cover. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I haven't quite fallen down a rabbit hole but i've kind of dabbled i guess um and i thought this one was pretty cool because um you know it because i already have the the 98 copy of the regular one um i did have also that chrome version at one point with uh it was like a fan expo toronto exclusive or something like that and it was double signed by snyder and uh and uh and jock but i but i ended up selling that one because it came back a nine four from cgc and i just it just bothered me for whatever reason but so i did move that one on to another great community member uh in you know maybe a year ago i'm not i don't remember exactly when um but uh yeah happy to have found that mexican edition of tech 880 um so next up uh this one's pretty cool so this is um I didn't realize, like, I, I, I really enjoyed this movie, and I really need to kind of get, do a little bit more research to see what other content or, you know, books or, or stories are available in this universe. 
but I really enjoyed this movie, and I didn't realize that Chris Claremont had written the comic book version of it or whatever. But uh, this is big, and this is apparently this is a very low print run book. Uh, so I'm gonna have to do some more research, see how many there are on the census and stuff like that. But uh, this is Big Hero Six, number one. So uh, as I just mentioned, I really do enjoy the Big Hero Six movie, um, and that's kind of the extent of my exposure to Big Hero Six and anything related to Big Hero Six. I have not read this comic, but I do plan on flipping through this. Uh, but yeah, written by Chris Claremont, Big Hero Six, number one, uh, pretty cool. Uh, uh, I, I mean, it, it's not, uh, you know, I, I don't know, I don't know if I consider this like a huge um, universe as far as fan, a fandom and popularity or whatever. But uh, you know, I, I enjoy it. So uh, uh, you, yeah, Jeffrey says that you don't. Uh, I don't know anything about about it but seeing the cover makes me want to check it out i mean there is a movie out there which you can watch which is awesome uh what's up puff comics 83 i don't is that stay puff or is that a different puff what's up either way what's up uh so yeah big hero six number one was in that hall uh this is a pretty cool book uh the the, the front cover presents really well back cover has some major issues you won't be able to see the back cover because it's kind of back and forth um, but uh, this is uh, Spidey Super Stories number one. So, uh, you know, a great, great presenting front cover, for, especially for this yellow cover. It's a 35 center. Um, so this is, of course, that sort of more, more targeted towards younger uh, kids. And, you know, these stories were made uh, easier to read and whatnot. But, you know, Marvel teamed up with the Electric Company on these Spidey Super Stories. So I found that, um, and uh, I, this was a pretty, I mean, I think I got this for like 10 bucks. <laughs> so that, I thought this was a pretty nice, uh, nice steal uh, on my part. Uh, although the back cover has, you know, major issues, but uh, it doesn't matter. This is more of a PC thing here on this, on this Spidey Super Stories for me. Uh, and the cover presents uh, great. So uh, happy to have found that and not uh, not not broken the bank on that. Uh, okay, he's the he was 40, okay. So you, so Stay Puff is now Puff Comics eighty uh, three. Thanks for the clarification, brother, and thank you for hanging out. Um, all right, so uh, I found some of these, you know, Barry Windsor Smith Weapon X uh, books in like cheaper bins. Uh, so, well, two of them to be specific. Uh, this one uh, is Weapon X, uh, Weapon X, uh, Marvel Comics Presents number 78 uh, with this really awesome Barry Windsor Smith cover. I mean, I love that cover. Uh, and uh, I think I, this was, I think this was like five bucks or something like that. So, um, and uh you know like it's 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 in decent condition uh it's not a nine eight it's you know it might be like a nine four something like that uh possibly uh with a clean impress or something but yeah i mean pretty nice barry windsor smith uh weapon x uh cover right here uh which i needed uh and was missing and then this i believe this is the first full appearance quote unquote of weapon x within that run uh, where he's throughout the book, but this issue 79, and this one's this one's like in even better condition uh, than that one. So uh, so yeah, I, I think I think I lucked out on on these two, um, especially this one because this one this one was like chump change. Uh, yeah, this whole the whole series uh, to Sam's point has kind of been on the rise um, for obvious reasons. But uh, yeah, I was happy to find these two and get these two uh, in the inventory slash collection over here. I don't know. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them. I probably will keep them for, for a minute. Um, uh, maybe get them slabbed. I'm, I don't know. Um, but they're both, yeah, they're, they're, they're both great covers, you know. They, they, these, these covers essentially belong side by side together, you know, 78 and 79. They're just the complementary issues uh, slash covers. So I was happy to find those. Um, and then a uh, couple Archies here, a little change of pace, some 10 centers uh, I was able to find and work work out what I thought were okay prices. 
Um, now this one's in pretty rough shape. This is this is Betty and Veronica, uh, issue number seven. Uh, pretty rough shape. Got a lot of writing on the cover and whatnot, but I don't care. Like I, I pretty much I'm, I'm after when I when I when I when I get these. Yeah, the insides of the whole Weapon X run are incredible. The Barry Windsor Smith art is fantastic. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a fan of mostly Veronica related covers, but you know, Betty and Veronica as well work, work for my collecting. Uh, but this one is, is, this is a golden age issue, uh, within Archie comics issue number seven. So yeah, I mean, it's got a lot of damage. It's got a lot of issues, um, but it presents okay. Uh, presents okay. You know, it does have a, a ton of writing on it right there and whatnot, but not in the way of sort of the main image or the main characters uh so here's uh betty and veronica issue number seven now uh the interior is um interior is fantastic it's like potentially white pages or off white to white pages i would say at least so the interior is is really nice so that's kind of what sold me on this copy because i do like flipping through these older archies uh yeah i'm a, <laughs> i'm a veronica guy uh, but, uh, but, but yeah, I appreciate Betty. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I think they both are necessary to the super complex and important stories that Archie Comics has to tell. Clearly, there's a subtext of sarcasm there, but it's fine. Uh, but yeah, I was happy to find this one and add this one. This one, uh, this next one though, is, is, uh, in much nicer shape. Uh, still a 10 center. This is Betty and Veronica, issue number 52. Uh, so you got Archie uh, getting a double smooch there, and then you got Jughead sort of, you know, throwing in his little uh, little uh, zinger there. But uh, Veronica's like, Archie, I was so wrong. And then Betty's like, yes, and I was also wrong. And so he gets kissed by them at the same time. And then Jughead's like, wrong or right, this guy always gets kissed. And I just thought it was hilarious. And, you know, another uh, Betty and Veronica cover uh really nice condition uh inside and out so i was happy to find this and pick this up uh veronica's the brunette uh jeffrey uh she uh betty is the blonde yep um so yeah so i was happy to find these two like i wasn't expecting to find archie books there that i was going to add to my collection but you know a lot of the other genres were so inflated and just overpriced in my opinion uh that i started gravitating towards hunting for sort of the other sort of more obscure subcategories that i collect um you know after i realized <laughs> that was what we were in for as far as pricing um but um okay and then this is sort of this is the last uh comic book for the big apple comic con haul that i'm again i've got some art pieces then i've got other haul stuff to show um but this was this is an issue that i've actually been after for a minute uh and i didn't want to settle for like a really low grade copy i would i would say this is a this is a solid mid grade slash high mid grade you know maybe a fine plus to very fine something like that i would say yeah that's my estimate of the grade i'm not the best grader um but based on the prices for like two O's or three O's or very low grade condition uh, copies of this comic that I've seen on like my comic shop and eBay and stuff like that. I thought this was a great deal. Like I paid 70 bucks, 75 bucks for it, but it's a, uh, it's a silver age 12 center Batman issue. And it's a, it's a really, really, really nice copy. And it's a fantastic Carmine Infantino penguin cover. I think it's my favorite silver age penguin cover it's batman issue number 190 uh and there's that uh mentioned uh armine infantino penguin cover right there so um so yeah uh pretty solid mid-grade to high mid-grade copy of this uh a batman a silver age batman issue that i've always wanted um in the collection i probably will slab this honestly i probably will press clean and slab this um for the for, for the collection but um, I don't know if I'm in a rush to do it, but, but yeah, pretty happy with that one. Uh, yeah, this is, it's, it is the, I think it is the best Penguin cover. I'm, I'm in agreement with that, Sam. That's my opinion as well. It's just, my, it's my personal favorite. Uh, I think it's a lot of people's personal favorite. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, so that's pretty much, you know, 
That is the uh, Big Apple uh, Con books uh, from my haul. I'll do a quick reverse show there, uh, reverse order. But um, yeah, uh, pretty cool kind of eclectic mix of pickups um, across the things that I collect. Um, you know, uh, so I'm happy with that. And these vampies were kind of bonuses, you know, these Adam Hughes vampies. So yeah, that's that's kind of my modest uh, comic haul from uh, Big Apple Comic Con. You see, we had that freebie comic or whatever, and the book I picked up from uh, from Jesse Simon. Uh, so we're going to get now into the two pieces of art that I picked up. Grab this portfolio. So um, there was a couple comic art dealers there, um, but I did pick up two, you know, old school original comic art pages. They're pretty low key pickups, nothing crazy. So uh, I, so here's the first one. This is a, this is actually a Tom Grummet Superboy page. Uh, so yeah, pretty low-key uh, art page pickup uh, from the, the 90 and 90s DC book right there. And then this other one, this one's really cool actually. Uh, it really, it, this one reminds me of, it's not a John Byrne piece, but it reminds me of a John Byrne cover. And I think when I show the page, you might know what I'm talking about. But this page, it's a splash page. It's from Batman Beyond issue number eight. The artist is Chris Batista and the inker is... Um, Rich Parada. Uh, Puff is saying she was a great villain. Yeah, exactly. She was a great villain in Batman Beyond. This one just jumped out to me and I just love this page. And it reminds me of the John Byrne sort of negative space cover to Spectacular Spider-Man 101. And if you're familiar with that cover and then you, you know, and you see this splash page, I think you know why I make that comparison. But signed by the artist in, in the bottom corner, Chris Batista. And there's there's ink 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 or ink a um, and uh, you know she's got the cityscape behind her and everything and she's just in full force right there and it's just a really cool especially you know great inks on this uh, but uh, it, it just reminds me so much of that spectacular Spider-Man 101 cover uh, <laughs> that it's just. And I, I, I had seen this floating around before. I might have even seen it in portfolio of Anthony Snyder's at a different show. And I considered pulling the trigger on it then. And I, I probably should have because it may have been cheaper back then. But, um, but this time I just couldn't walk away from it. I had to close the deal on it. Um, thanks, guys. Yeah, right. Like, does it not remind you of the John Byrne cover for Spectacular Spider-Man 101? Like. You know, if you're not familiar with that cover, go look that cover up. It's it's an it's amazing cover. It's probably one of the best, um, you know, covers in that spectacular Spider-Man run. It's, I think it's one of the best negative space covers of all time. But uh, or I don't know if you can truly consider it negative space, but it, it it's, it's very negative space centric. But I love this page. I thought I, I thought this was a fantastic, fantastic piece of art. Um, so I'm actually. Um, I'm actually looking forward to like I flip through the issue digitally or whatever like I and I and I pulled a screen grab. Um, let me find it. There it is. So that's what the um, let me see if I can get that side by side. That's what the uh, you know the published page looks like in the in the digital the digital version of the comic anyway. Is that even visible? There it is. So there they kind of get a side by side right there of the art and the uh, the published. Page right there so um, that's as best as I could do 